First of all, thank you for having us. Um, we are Aerobits. Today we would like to present to you a concept uh, about how can we enable technologies uh, and drones to safely integrate into the airspace using technologies currently available like ADSB, FLARM, as well as remote identification. Sorry. Okay. Sorry. Um, so first of all, I would like to explain who we are. We are a Polish technological company specializing in uh, micro ADSB systems as well as ground infrastructure. Um, we are using technologies based on ADSB, FLAM, remote identification, Bluetooth, Wi-Fi, LTE, as well as any means of communication that can be integrated onto a drones as well into a ground system to allow safe integration into the airspace. We build solutions on global patents. So we've patented all our systems globally. Um, uh, so far, we've been on the market for seven years. We've got more than 400 customers in 60 countries. Um, that allows us to actually grow rapidly across the, across the globe. Um, like I mentioned, we are a, a global company. We are delivering more than 7,000 systems per year to different customers based on systems for ground infrastructure, building them for CAAs as well as commercial users. Uh, we specialize in monitoring of the airspace as well as systems for tracking and safe integration into the airspace. Our ground infrastructure is becoming a frequent system required by many, many organizations across the world. We will explain a little bit later on actual use cases, who we work with and how we develop our systems. Uh, our early adaptation allowed us to be one of the main leaders of that technology globally. There are only three companies in the world at the moment specializing in complete build of those systems and integration into the airspace. I would like to pass on the mic to my colleague Rafael, who will explain more about remote identification, use cases and regulations. Uh, good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, it's a pleasure to be here with you again. I'm so happy to see so many colleagues from drone industry from previous edition of DroneTex. Uh, during a year, many things have changed in uh, drone industry, especially in regulations regarding remote identification. And I will focus on that case in my part of uh, presentation. This time I will talk about uh, Aerobit's solutions regarding remote identification and some practical use of it in real life. As Konrad said, many mission of Aerobits is to provide safety in the airspace. Nothing has changed in this matter. However, the world of drones is constantly expanding, and uh, in those difficult times, even small steps of progress are welcome, and implementation of remote identification in our lives will be a significant step into the digital future, not only for drones operators. Now, please take a look at short video. Can we play the video? Okay, thank you. Thank you. Uh, in this short video, we wanted to focus your minds on the awareness that there is only two months left to be compliant with remote identification rules in the European Union countries. I am sure that nearly all of you have heard about remote identification. And nevertheless, let's remind it once again. What is remote ID? So remote identification is a functionality of a drone that requires unmanned aerial vehicle to broadcast information about this vehicle for identification purposes. In other words, it's something like digital license plate for a drone. It's a conspect, it's a conspect that uh, states that each drone should have its it own uh, digital license plate. Drone pilots who want to comply with the requirements of remote identification need to equip their drone with remote ID functionality. 
in the United States of America, Federal Aviation Administration has two times postponed the final date when the remote ID should be applied in our lives. They did it uh, in, uh, the first date was 16th of uh, September 2022, but they have delayed it for a one year till 16th of uh, September 2023. And while preparing my speech for uh, drone text in September, the FAA has once again postponed the final date, but this time they did it for, for half a year, till 16th of March 2024. Uh, in Europe, it's more simple. EASA has established that the uh, final date for remote identification will be 1st of January 2024. So after those dates, all drone operators must comply with remote ID requirements. And you need to know that remote identification will not be an option, it will be mandatory. Uh, there are two standards regulating uh, remote identification. The, one, the first one is ASTM, it's an international standard called F3411 Part 22. And uh, all Aerobits devices uh, which uh, have functionality of remote ID complied with this standard. It means that you can legally use our devices in all American market. Uh, the second standard is European standard, ASD-10. It's called PREN 4709 Part 002. And uh, Aerobits devices are also compliant with this standard. It means that you can legally use our devices in all European Union countries. Uh, moreover, uh, our IDME Pro device is also FAA approved. So those are some changes from previous uh, year. There are two types of uh, remote identification, uh, direct remote identification and network remote identification. Uh, direct remote identification is a functionality of a drone in flight. So uh, when the drone is in flight, it broadcasts the information in a way that this information can be received locally by using uh, Bluetooth or Wi-Fi technology. And network remote identification is a, a transmission of an information in a way that uh, this information can be received by other parties over an uh, internet connection over internet network. Uh, on the other slide, uh, you can see that uh, drone operators who want to be compliant with direct remote ID concept first need to register in a national aviation authority. In return, the drone operator receives an uh, identification number. It's called drone operator number then the drone operator uh, needs to input this number into remote ID system. And when the drone is in flight, all those necessary information are being broadcast through the remote ID module so that the person which is near the drone can receive and display those information on their personal device, such as mobile phone or tablet. Of course, the mobile phone should have appropriate application installed which support remote identification. Uh, our product portfolio regarding remote ID devices is uh, divided into three versions, IDME, IDME Plus, and IDME Pro. Uh, the most advanced version, IDME Pro, is equipped in Bluetooth technology, Wi-Fi technology, GNSS, and pressure sensor. Uh, it's also FAA-approved device on the American market. Uh, in this slide, uh, you can see the differences in those uh, products, but uh, the main advantages of Aerobits remote ID devices is small white, uh, small covering, uh, the easy integration uh, with Mavlink protocol, and easy configuration by using micro USB slot and 80 comments. Uh, on the other slide, you can see uh, that this year we have also launched uh, OEM versions of remote ID modules. Those modules uh, were designed especially for global drone manufacturers 
and RL modelers who wants to be complied with FAA and EASA requirements regarding remote identification. Uh, so now our group of IDME family is complete and meet the expectation of drone manufacturers. Now let's show you some special use of our remote ID modules by our customers. Uh, you can see that the application of our remote ID devices is not only for drones, but also for radio control model jets. Uh, our desire was to provide the lightest and the most adaptable remote ID solutions that can be easily integrated on any unmanned aerial vehicle. Uh, Aerobits has made some uh, flight tests in Szczecin in Poland, where we wanted to show the ranges of our IDME devices. And uh, the results are as following. We have reached on our mobile phone with built-in uh, antenna of our remote ID device four and a half kilometer. By using external antenna attached to our IDME Pro device, we have reached over seven and a half kilometer range. And by using our omnidirectional ground station, we have uh, been able to reach even over 10 kilometers. Please be advised that uh, this is really a very impressive result because uh, you need to consider that we, those devices use Bluetooth and Wi-Fi technology. So that's really quite impressive. Uh, and in the, on the other side, slide, you can see uh, that at the beginning of this year, we have also a chance to make some demonstration tests uh, in Ostrava, in Czech Republic. Uh, we show the technological possibilities of the remote ID technology, and also we present uh, our ADSB transceiver. And the signal from our ADSB transceiver was seen in ATC towers. So uh, we also provided, together with PANSA, some uh, demonstration te tests in Szczecin. Uh, regarding remote identification solutions. The integration also went smooth. Uh, and all those activities lead to promote and show use space and remote ID awareness for many authorities and aviation institutions. Uh, you can see that Aerobits provides an excellent high value solution, not only for drone pilots, but also for radio control model jets pilots. Please remember, Drones are the future, and I am sure that authorities and companies will work together to make it possible. Thank you for your attention. Now, Conrad will tell you something more about ADSB and FLARM solutions from Aerobits. Thank you, Rafał. Um, I would like to compliment what Rafał just uh, mentioned about remote ID. Uh, ADSB and FLARM standards have been around for much, much longer than remote identification. So, of course, they are much more popular across MEND aviation as well, as well as gliders and uh, general aviation. Um, that doesn't mean that remote identification will be the only source of, of um, broadcasting the information. What we want to present in the second part of this presentation is that what we provide is no longer theoretical. It is in practice. So we deliver systems that are or have been now in use by countries for a couple of years, three years. And we're going to start with a short explanation on what is ADSB and what is the use case of it. And then we're going to move to FLARM technology and explanation on how we support all those technologies. Probably most of you know already that ADSB is a system used by MEND aviation across the globe uh, to broadcast their position, altitude, vector, speed, and display the data on the radar. The same functionality can be integrated onto a drones through small microtransceivers, microtransponders. Um, that being said, all the data is represented on the radar in a very manageable manner. Um, what can be achieved by applying just a small transceiver on a, on a drone is complete collision avoidance with manned aviation. Uh, that is what Arab is trying to achieve by implementing those systems on the drones. We are one of the only three suppliers of those systems in the world, and system starts from six grams. A uh, second system that we provide together, you know, or in conjunction with uh, ADSB, we've got a dual module for ADSB and FLARM. FLARM is a flight alarm system for motion recognition as well as, as collision avoidance that is uh, commonly used by over 50,000 users worldwide. And those users can be 
uh, gliders, paragliders, um, helicopters, as well as UAVs. That technology uh, is now implemented in almost 100% uh, percent, uh, users of or gliders across Europe, and is also mandatory at some events. Um, that being said, it is being more and more conveniently used by drone operators simply to avoid collision exactly with gliders as well as helicopters. To supplement all those technologies, Aerobis provides systems for ground infrastructure. Infrastructure can be supplied in many ways and in many systems. It can have all systems like ADSB, flam receivers, remote identification, and can be in a form of a mobile station, omnidirectional, or sector systems. All those systems are complementary and are fully compatible with standards like ADSB and flam and remote identification. In the second part, I would like to concentrate on what has already been achieved to showcase that our systems are not only on a paper, but they have been in use for years by global organizations. One of the first use cases is Dronic, which is a joint venture by uh, DFS as well as Deutsche Telekom. Uh, together with us, with Aerobits, we have created a UTM standard. Uh, we're trying to propagate it across Europe. At the moment, we've developed over 100 stations, ground stations, as the receiver stations in Germany. That is to supplement all the technologies that we provide and that Dronic wants to implement into their system together with DFS. Uh, saying that, our hook on device that we have developed together with Dronic is 95% compliant with today network remote identification standards by EASA. Uh, together with PANSA uh, in Poland, we have been developing um, very similar concept to Germany, but based on a slightly different approach. We've also developed three forward ships with more than 50 stations to fully integrate drones into the TECU system. At the moment, that is just a first step. We are now developing airports as well as equipping the same localizations with additional stations for remote identifications. And there are more projects to come in the following years. All of that is to do one thing, to allow commercial operations of drones. Then the second use case, or first use case, or third use case, is how this enables business to grow. Again, this is not theoretical. This is in practice as, and has been for the last two years. Farada is our partner. All drones are equipped with transceivers. What they have managed to do because of the infrastructure that it allows them to fly, they managed to complete over 85,000 kilometers of medical transport over a year. 1,500 commercial flights and 1,100 hours in the air. So this is no longer theory that is happening on a day-to-day -day basis, using our ground infrastructure, using our systems on the drones. What we're we doing now as well, together with Unifly, that has completely integrated our system into the UTM platform, our hook-on device, uh, Unifly has been selected by Bulatsa in Bulgaria as a provider of UTM. With cooperation with us and Bulatsa, our hook-on device is a preferred option for drone tracking in Bulgaria. This is a third country that we are developing now as a step-by-step. -step. So Germany, Poland, and now Bulgaria. So this is not a POC. That's a live project that we're doing actually at this stage. Thank you very much for your attention. Hope you enjoyed it. <laughs>